Hello, my amazing Algebra Half students. This is Mrs. A, and I love math. And today we're doing Lesson 50, which is about fractional parts of a number, or fractional equations. So we're kind of getting into the big time now. And I think we need to have kind of a little celebration, because we're on Lesson 50. Let's have a little party. Happy 50 lesson day to you. Happy 50 lesson day to you. Happy 50 lesson day, dear Algebra Half students. Happy 50 lesson day to you. You've done really well. Celebration over. Let's get back to business. I hope you liked your little celebration there. I think lesson 50 is a really big deal. Okay, so now we're reviewing our fractions. A fraction designates a part of a whole. And remember, a whole, we're going to designate a whole as one because it's one whole. Okay, so like a pie or something like that. Here we've got a big rectangle that is our whole, and then we're separating our whole into five equal parts. So wouldn't, since we have uh, five equal parts, wouldn't each part of these be called a fifth? So this is one fifth, and this is one fifth, and one fifth, and one fifth, and one fifth. And so when we add all of those up together, all together we have five pieces of one-fifth parts. So that's five-fifths, or one whole. So we could say this equals five-fifths, or one whole. But what if we did not want to shade the whole thing? Suppose, um, so if we shaded it all, it would be five-fifths. But suppose we only shaded two parts. So now... We're shading two parts out of five. So we shaded two fifths of the whole. All right, so what this lesson is about is what happens if our whole is not just a whole? What if it's a number? Like in your book, it says, what if your whole is 150? And that's the whole part, the whole of it. 150, and then we have to figure out, well, what is two-fifths of the 150? So when we do this, if we erase these for a minute, they're still fifths, but we're going to change their notation. Since our whole turned into a number, we're going to say, okay, what would be five equal parts of 150? Well, 150 divided by five is 30. So each part, each of the five equal parts is equal to 30. So now we're just gonna put 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, and all together as the whole, it equals 150, doesn't it? So now when I shade one 30 and then another 30, we just shaded two-fifths of 150, and two-fifths of 150 is 30 plus 30, or 60. So, that's what we're working on today, okay? A fraction of a number, and when we do that, a fraction of a number... So let's just write it right here so we can see our problem before I take it all off the board. So two-fifths of 150, because we don't want to write a diagram for everything, do we? Okay, two-fifths of 150 is the same thing as two-fifths times 150. So I'm going to put the little one down there to make it a little bit easier, and now... Let's go ahead and do this math. So the five and the 150 will cancel. 
Because 150 divided by 5, we already said, was 30. And then 5 divided by 5 is 1. And then 2 times 30 is 60. Isn't that what we got when we had those two parts shaded? And 1 times 1 is 1. So the answer can be found from a multiplication problem because you really don't want to have to draw it out every single time, do you? Okay, so now we're doing example one and we're going to have some interesting little word problems. It says, what fraction of 75 is 25? Now, anytime you're doing these, we can take the what fraction and we could put in or whatever we wanted to, but we're gonna put F for fraction to remind us that we're talking about a fraction. It's still just a variable like n, but we're going to say we're going to call the fraction f because your book does. We want to be consistent, okay? And then of is always going to be replaced by times. And 75 goes here. Is will always be replaced by equals. And 25 goes here. So now I have a little equation. And I have an unknown here, and I want to get the unknown by itself. So what if I divide both sides by the 75? Because don't I want to get my unknown by itself? Okay, so the 75 divided by 75, poof, it disappears. And we get 25 divided by 75 is F. But 25 and 75 have a common factor. So we're going to cancel each one and divide each one by 25. So 25 divided by 25 is one, and 75 divided by 25, think of quarters, 75 divided by 25 is three, and my answer is the fraction is one third. One third of 75 is 25. And that is your first example. Wasn't that easy and fun? Okay, this is example number two. Five sevenths of what number is five halves? Okay, so five sevenths we know looks like this. Five sevenths of will always be replaced with times. What number, we can just call that in is, is our equal, five halves. So we've turned our word problem into an equation. Now our n is over here. Don't we want to get n by itself? So we need to get rid of the five sevenths. The easiest and the fastest way to get rid of a fraction is to multiply by its reciprocal. The reciprocal is seven over five. So we're going to multiply by 7 over 5 on the left-hand side and by 7 over 5 on the right-hand side. So now my 5 and my 5 and my 7 and 7 cancel. My n is all by itself. And over here, something cancels over here. We have a 5 and a 5 that both divide by 1, which means that they can go away. And we have 7 halves is the number. Now, seven halves wound up being a fraction, but it's still a number, isn't it? So we could say five sevenths is five halves of seven halves. Okay, so let's check it. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna plug it back in. Five sevenths of what number, and that's what we found, so seven halves is five halves. So let's check it. The sevens cancel, and we end up with five halves, and it works. I love it when it works. Here's our last example. Five sevenths of five halves is what number? Okay, so let's make it into a nice equation here. Five sevenths of will become a times. Five halves, we write down, is becomes an equal. What number? We could call it n. It might be a fraction, but it doesn't hurt if it's n or f. It doesn't matter the way you solve it. Okay, so now when we multiply, we have our n all by itself. 
So we don't have to do anything except multiply these together. And 25 over 14 is my final answer, isn't it? Because nothing cancels. 25 over 14 is the answer. And that was our last one. Okay, so the answer is 25 over 14, and let's go to our practice problems. Okay, here is your first practice problem. But this is one that's not like any one that we did in the lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and do it for you. Notice what it is. It says, what fraction of 20 is 140? Well, 140 is bigger than 120. So it's not going to be a piece or a part of 140, is it? So let's look, of, of 20. So let's look and see how we set this one up. This one's interesting. So we're going to put F for what fraction, and then times for the of, and then 20 is, is going to be our equal, 140. Okay, now we're trying to get the fraction by itself. So we're going to divide by 20 and divide by 20. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So now the 20 goes away, the 20 over 20, and we get fraction is... 140 divided by 20 is 7. Okay, so the fraction 7 times 20 is 140. They kind of tricked us. It wasn't a fraction at all. But remember that any number can be written as a fraction. So the fraction, there really is a fraction that would be 7 over 1. But you can just write it as 7 because that's what the answer is. That was kind of a tricky one, wasn't it? Okay, this is practice two, but I did the first one for you. So copy it down and pause your video. Okay, first thing we're going to do is get it into an equation. Seven fifths. Notice that seven fifths is actually bigger than one. Of means times. What number, we'll just call that in, is, is our equal, three-eighths. Okay, so now we're trying to get the n by itself, and we have this fraction over here, seven-fifths, bothering our n. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to have five-sevenths, and over here, five-sevenths. Okay, so here all of this cancels out. We have our n all by itself. On the other side... We have nothing's going to cancel, is it? So we're going to end up with 15 on the top. I'm going to have to kind of write my fraction funny here. And then 56 on the bottom. 15 over 56. And we know, because we saw it in its factored form, that there's nothing that's going to cancel there, is there? Okay, so 15 56 is the number. Okay, here is our last practice problem on our 50th lesson. So, copy it down and then pause your video. Okay, so 5 thirteenths of is times 26. Let's just go ahead and write it 26 over 1 so that we won't get confused. Is is our equal sign. What number? Okay, so now this is nice. Notice that I do have a cancellation over here, and my n is already all by itself. 26 and 13 are both divisible by 13. 13 divided by 13 is 1, and 26 divided by 13 is 2. 5 times 2 is 10. 1 times 1, the answer is 10. And we are done with lesson 50. Don't forget to celebrate a milestone today like we just did. Lesson 50 is a big deal. And this is Mrs. A. And may God bless your day.